Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mini Hacks Solved. My name is Alex Martinez. I am a developer advocate here at Salesforce. I am a MuleSoft developer advocate, actually. And today we are going to go through the TDX 2023 MuleSoft hack, which is perform a basic data transformation using DataWeave. Let's do it. So before we start, we have been tasked with integrating with a system that returns its payload as XML. As we can see here on the left, this is a payload that we get from the system. This SOAP-based web service returns a payload that needs to be transformed into a JSON payload for a downstream service. As part of the transformation, we need to only include fields that are relevant to reduce the payload size and provide some formatic changes. Covering XML to JSON can be challenging. Luckily, you'll use MuleSoft's DataWeave programming language. DataWeave allows you to easily read and parse data from one format, transform it, and then write it out in a different format. So right now we are accessing this transformation through our DataWeave playground. You can find it in dataweave.mulesoft.com slash learn slash playground. Or if you go to dataweave.mulesoft.com, you will be able to see the link at the top. Like here, right now I am at dataweave.mulesoft.com and here at the top we see the playground link. So you can click on that and it will open a brand new dataweave playground for you so you can try it out. Anyway, back to our example, we have our XML here on the left side. So for example, here we can see that it's an event and then we have event name, event start, event end, and then product area and event address, team and mascot. Now on the right is the output of the script that we have here in the middle. But right now, the only thing that we have, this is a comment, so this really doesn't exist. <laughs> The only thing that we have here is we are saying that the output of this script is going to be application JSON. So we can change this, for example, if we want it from XML to XML, or if we want it from XML to DWL, which is DataWeave, or if we want it from XML to YAML, and so on. And as you can see, this is changing right here as well. Now we have application YAML. So let's go back to JSON because we wanted to transform this from XML to JSON. This is where we are. And right now we are only telling it to output the payload. If I were to change this to one, then we would only output one and so on. So we are just outputting the payload for now, which is basically just transforming the same structure from XML to JSON. We can see here that it has an event, event name, event start, event end, the product, the area, and so on. But now, what we want as expected output is not this. We actually want to have something like this. So we want to have just one single object of JSON with different keys and values inside. For example, we want an event, product, feature, zone, location, when, until, and fun rating. That's all that we want to output. So let's get started on this transformation. Since we want just a JSON output, let's just make it a, a, an object. <laughs> this object will be outputted as just an empty object in JSON. And then we want to have a key called event. So we can simply write event, put a colon in there, and that is gonna become a key. Now, whatever we want to put here, we can put one, two, three, and this becomes the value of event. In this case, we want this to be Trailblazer DX23, which is the value that comes from event name. So in order for us to get the event name from here, we can do payload, which is what we have here in the input, dot, and then here you can see that it's already giving us event, because that's the first thing that comes here. It's just an event. So if we click there on event and then put another dot, then it's gonna ask us what else you want. So in this case, we want event name. 
And that's all. We have now payload.event.event name, which is subtracting what we have here in Trailblazer DX 2023, and it's putting it in the event key. Now let's continue with the second one. Now we have product. So let's do a comma and write here product. So now this product is MuleSoft in this case. So MuleSoft comes from event product name. So let's do the same as before, payload.event.product.name. And now we have extracted this value from this place. So of course, if this changes, let's say just M, then this changes. If I put here Salesforce, whatever we receive in the input, of course, will be changed in the output because we are just mapping this. We are not hard coding this. So now the third thing is feature. So here, let's create another key called feature. And now this is data weave. So data weave comes from product feature. So let's do the same payload.event.product.feature. And now we have our data weave. Next, we have zone. And this is mini hacks. Where does mini hacks come from? This comes from event. I can make this smaller. So it comes from events and then area and then zone. So let's put a comma here, create another key called zone, colon, and then payload.event.area.zone. There we have mini hacks. Next is location. So for location, we have Moscow West San Francisco. Where can we find that? Actually, there's not a single thing that says Moscow West, comma, San Francisco, but we do have the area building, Moscow West, and then we have here in event address, city, San Francisco. So what we can do for this is to create a concatenation between these two and just add a comma in the middle. So there are two ways to do this concatenation of strings. I'm going to show you. First, let's put a comma and create our new location key. And then here we want to extract first Moscow West. So let's do payload dot area, sorry, dot event dot area. And then building is Moscow West dot building. So now we end up with Moscow West, which is what we wanted. And now, we can concatenate two strings by using the plus plus function, and this will concatenate something else like that. Of course, if I don't add a space, it's not going to add a space. So that is one way we can see how this works. So for example, here, instead of having this string, now I am going to get the San Francisco just like that. So if I do payload, dot event dot event address dot city then i will get san francisco but look how this looks like it says location moscow west san francisco that's not what i wanted so i need to concatenate another string right here which says comma space and that is all and then plus plus and now we have this. So let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see this clearer. We have the location payload.event.area.building plus plus, and then we have the comma space and then the city. So we end up with Moscow West, comma San Francisco, which is what we wanted. But there is another way. So I'm going to comment this out just so you can try it out later. And now we have location payload.event.area.building. And before I continue, I am going to first open here, double quotes. This will become a string. So of course you will see this hard coded, but then I am gonna add here a dollar sign, open parentheses, close parentheses. So now whatever is here inside this dollar sign and parentheses is being expressed or being run as an expression. 
So now we just have to add here directly the comma and the space, and then we can put another expression to put the city from here. So if I copy this and then open dollar sign in parentheses and I put this inside, now we end up with the same thing that we wanted. Let me just remove this. So here, like this is a huge thing and this looks way cleaner because instead of putting plus, 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 now we just have to put it here directly. So it looks way better in the formatting side. But if it works better for you using plus, plus, then that is totally okay as well. Okay, now the next thing that we are going to add is a when, and this when is 2023-0306. Where does this come from? This actually comes from this date, 2023-0306. But the formatting is different, right? So again, there are two ways to do this. First, let's add a comma here and create the when colon. And then let, let's say payload.event.event .event start. So this is what we have. This is a string currently. So we can either just replace the slash with a dash. And we would do that by using the replace function. So just select replace and then just put what we want to replace, which is a dash, and then write with, and then write the dash. So now you can even read what it's doing. So you get the event start, which is this string, and then you're saying replace slash with dash. And that's how you have it. Pretty easy, right? But there's another way of doing this. Let's say that, um, I don't know, maybe something changes in the formatting and it's just in this, it's not just the string that you have. So the next one that we have is until, and this one is 2023-0308, which is the next one that we have, 2023-0308. So we, can, we could do the same thing, let's say until, and then payload.event.event .event end. We could say replace dot with dash. And we would be able to have the same result as we did before. But if we wanted to treat this as a date instead of as a string, there is another way of doing this. First, we have our date. And then we are saying as date because we want to transform this as a date. But unfortunately, after we do as date, we are not able to, like, DataWeave is not able to know immediately that this is a date. It's just reading the string 2023-0308 and it doesn't know what the dots are. So we can say as date. And then in between curly brackets, we can write format, colon, and then in between quotes, so like a string, we're going to say what is this date format. So we have year, 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 because we have 2023. We have then a dot, and then we have a month, which is mm, because there is 03, then dot, and finally we have 08, which is the day, so we do the d. And now it is able to read the date. So now after we do that, this is actually in a date format instead of a string format. So now we are treating this as a date. So what we can do now is taking from the date, we can put it in a string format. So for example, now that we have the date, now we are transferring to a string. And we are putting here in curly brackets another format. And now we can set this up to whatever format we want. So for example, if we were to say year, year, dash, month, dash, day, then we would end up with 230308. Or if we were to put year, 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 and then month, month, and then day, day, 
then we would end up with the same format that we had before. So this might be a little bit more work, but this is the way that you would treat it if it was a date. In this case, we are treating it as if it were a string. So again, it depends on your use case. Maybe you could just use replace with in both of these cases, but I'm just gonna leave this for you so you can see this later. And finally, we have the fun rating. So if we put a comma here and then fun rating colon, and now this says hi. Well, if you check out here under event area fun rating, here we have a 90. So how are we going to rate this? Maybe we can say if the rating is more than 80, then this is high. And if it is less than 80, then it is low. So we are going to create an if here directly. If, and then in between parentheses, let's get all of the data. So payload dot event dot area dot fun rating. If that is more than 80, then this will be high. So let me make this bigger so you can see. This will be high, else this will be low. So now in this case, we have high. But what if we were to change this to 80? What would happen if we put 80? Is that more than 80? No. So now this is low. If I were to put 8, then this is low. But we have a 90, so this is high. This is a high fun rating. And that is all. We ended up having the expected output with this beautiful, beautiful code. And remember, there are several ways to do the same thing, like what we did here in when and until, or how to concatenate different strings, like here in location. You could also create a function with this in case you wanted to reuse this. You would create a function up here saying fun and then the name of my function, whatever. And then you would be able to continue with that function, creating it there. You can also create variables by using the keyword var. It all depends on what is better for your use case. In this case, because it's a very simple transformation, I decided to put everything right here next to the key. But you can also make this cleaner. As I said, you can, for example, make this a function instead of leaving the whole thing here. Or you could make this a function to be able to transform the different dates or make this a function to be able to change all of the dates that have a string format from whatever character they have to a dash. You can create functions, variables, however, if this is a big transformation, then you most likely will have more functions and variables. In this case, it's just a small transformation. I thought this was very simple. So we can just make it directly there on the keys. And that is how you solve that mini hack. I really, really hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you later for another episode of Mini Hack Solved. Next time, I will be doing the solution for Dreamforce 2023, which was in September 2023. Keep posted. Bye.